Right, this is Ben. It is Absolute Radio. You're going to get live music in a moment from one of the world's biggest rock and roll bands and half of the aforementioned massive rock and roll band are here. We have Chad, we have Peak. Good to see you, boys. Good to see you again. Good to see you, buddy. Can I just say, if I, I didn't know you and I didn't know that you were in the band and if we were walking down the street and you walked past me, I would instantly know what you guys did for a living. Just look at yourselves. Like that? What do you, what do you figure? I'll <laughs> just you look at yourselves, okay? Why? Because we have sunglasses on? <laughs> sunglasses on and, you know... We well, get these lights on, you yeah, know, the, all these fancy lights you have. That not, your lighting, you know, right? Well, for you. If right? I wasn't so damn jet lagged and I could actually get some <laughs> sleep when I come over to this country, it'd be all right, but I've got, like, some serious luggage under these Maybe so. Hey, you look good though, That's and also you have the uh, the obligatory rock and roll uniform one, which is the uh, the black t shirt. Black, yeah? you have black, to. black, and more black. Yeah, we have it's to simple. Black. You don't have to make a lot of choices at night. No. Keeps it really simple. Bad guys. What are we gonna wear tonight, guys? I was thinking. Uh, black. black. Yeah. All right. It's and also, good. when you pack, you just pick up six or sixty because your tours go on for a while, uh, black tees. Yes. And exactly. you're good to go. So it's good to have you back in the UK. Are you looking forward to playing live in, in this country? Absolutely. Well, of course you have to say that. Again. <laughs> You're not going to go, no. Not really. <laughs> no, not really. part of the job. Uh, <laughs> of course. But, but the UK has, uh, has always been good, I think, to Nickelback, hasn't yes. it? Absolutely. Yes, pretty much so. Um, yeah, we always have a good time when we're here. We, uh, I try to drag you out every time I get over here and... And now that you've got a youngster in your life that's yeah. taking So please a... invite me out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Even more <Please>. so. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the UK tour is uh, a whole bunch of shows, but the, the Dark Horse tour seems to have been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, is that how it feels for you? Is, is the Life on the Road Reasons tough? The tour was... Actually, the Silver Side Up tour was really long. That was... No, actually, the All the Right Reasons tour was longer. It was just, uh, just shy of three years. Wow. Okay. And how, how that was because of the UK, actually, which is good. We can we can blame yeah. on the UK for us touring a long time. That's yeah. You know, like rock star came up at the end there. Yeah, because it was an. Odd, I mean, that was an odd album, really, in the sense that it came out, and, and then it sort of had another life mm -hmm. about eighteen months later. Yeah, because yeah. we kept releasing singles that wouldn't catch on over here, and then finally rock star <laughs> came along and like, yay! <laughs> try, try, try again. Right. Absolutely, it certainly worked. And uh, is rock star one of those songs which, when you see it on the set list? You think, oh, God, we got, we got to play this because no. you, you still enjoy playing it, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. The people sing along. It's that that's. It's kind of bizarre though when you see, uh, you know, dads out there with their kids on their shoulders singing. You know, everybody's got a drug drug dealer They're on speed, speed dial. dial. I'm kind of like I kind of look kind of look sideways and go, ah, oh, they don't know what that means. Okay, <laughs> let's just move on. But it, it, everybody sings to it, so how can you not like to play something that everybody gets into? Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw Aerosmith in Hyde Park, and I was I was not entirely convinced they were going to do I Don't Want to Miss a Thing because I know it's not one of their favourite songs and yet mm -hmm. obviously it's one of their biggest hits yes. and yet when they played it every person in, in, the, uh, in the field was just having the time of their life and you know whether that's an 8 year old girl or an 80 year old bloke it's one of those songs that people just love and I, I feel have you ever done a show and not played Rockstar? Um, we've never done a show and not played How You Remind Me so that's more the uh, that's more the, the one that uh, I'd I don't think they're. Since Rockstar been. came out as a single, we have no. played it every night. Yeah, because you would be lynched if you didn't. We'd be lynched yes. exactly. Yeah, and then we get you know we get the singles that come out here like this last one I think and we're like, gee, we better run this single here pretty quick. We got to make sure we know how to play this thing properly <laughs> before we go. How, how quickly does it take for you to to learn the songs live when you make an album? And Dark Horse seemed to come out uh, ever so quickly after the previous album, but that obviously is the case that that previous album had had a longer life uh, how long does it take you to, to work the new songs up when you play them in the studio well that was the second time we've ever performed if today was your last day did you <laughs> no, I'm no. kidding acoustically though I mean, the well as a whole no. package yeah wow <laughs> so acoustically yeah. slash totally wholly yeah. And was that the way the sort of Mutt Lang worked in the studio as well he likes that sort of live feel in a studio even though you're making a studio album doesn't he uh, sometimes yes sometimes depends, no yeah. Uh, it depends. It really does depend on the song. Like some songs, really get pieced together, and then other songs just stem out of sort of a live riff. You know, like uh, "Burnt to the Ground," for instance, was these riffs that I had that I'd recorded on my own uh, at Christmas. I mean, I'm in the studio, and uh, I only know how to use half the gear in my studio, and I'm 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 calling Joey, as in what the hell's on Joey's head from the photograph tune. I'm like, Joe, okay, what input? If I need the recording, yeah. Where's, where's the on button? Where's the where? Makes this thing go. Twelve. I need input twelve, and then I want to go. You know, and it's just like, oh, it's like so much crap that I need to learn just to plug in the guitar and start, you know, recording riffs, and uh, you know, it's it's an, it's a, it's zany. <laughs> 
your instrument, really. <laughs> zany. We need to get into the interview. Bananas. We need to mention, mention the word zany at least twice before the end of the interview. Yeah, That's my favorite word emu, if we can yeah. slide emu in here somehow, too. Yeah. I suppose your voice is, is your main instrument as well, despite you playing guitar. How do you keep the voice uh, like that? Because when you're on tour, I think I've asked the same question to Dave Grohl, a man who literally gives you 110%, like mm. you do, every night when you're on stage. How do you keep that instrument fresh? Uh, it's tough. And uh, I agree, Dave's a great screamer. Um, it's it's tough sometimes because you don't just tune this up and, you know, it sounds a little different every day. Um, you it, gargles ranch dressing. Ra I think ranch dressing. That's a, one, you know, I'm more a Thousand expose, Island kind of guy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to expose your secret or anything. But. Um, Is it the Paul Newman one? If I could just get a little vinaigrette uh, <laughs> suddenly dressing. I, when you go um, to Rome, maybe it's a little bit of balsamic. And, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it yeah, it just all depends. I, I mean, you try to get a ton of sleep, and now that the show is two hours long, um, you try to keep your party nights to you've got to pick your battles. You don't just do it every other night because you're you know, on the road. Now it's like... Is there something going on tonight? Because if there's nothing going on tonight, I've got to get some sleep. It takes it takes like one show of like going out there and not really being able to sing properly to go, you know, with your pants down around your ankles, pretty much going, "Geez, I better not do that again." Because uh, the guitar goes out of tune or it doesn't work, you fix it. Your voice doesn't work that night. Boy, not much yeah. you can do. How has the band changed over the years? What advice would you give the new, the fresh Nickelback? Now you've been doing it for for quite some time. Oh, uh, why? Get a new drummer regularly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you did. <laughs> Just change them like socks. No. Uh... <laughs> I'm not commenting on any yeah, of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. I jest. Yeah. Um, play everywhere as much as you can. If that means setting up in a parking lot. You know, play every little tiny pub and bar you can. And... Uh, and just, you know, figure out what you're doing hmm. and uh, figure out what you do well and, and, and work at it. Do you take much notice of the criticism that the band gets? I think we've... We get we've criticized? A little, from time to time. <laughs> mm. I, I call you... you forward I, that link to me. I've never I call it. you the Marmite band because... Have you, have you ever tasted Marmite? I have, it's like a Yeah. And the advertising campaign in this country for Marmite is... And they literally say this on the advert. Marmite, you either love it or hate it. And I think the same can be applied to some people with, with sure. Nickelback, obviously. Absolutely. We've definitely polarized fans, yeah. And I just think that, and we were talking about this off the air, I think it's a case of you make good old-fashioned rock and roll. And I think some people sometimes can take their music a little too seriously. Would you sure. agree? I, I actually think that a lot of people think that we take ourselves yeah. very seriously, and we don't. We don't take ourselves seriously at all. Um, and then you see, I think people need to see more of you. You need to maybe come and do a show here. For yeah, a but of all weeks. the hipsters and their, you know, <laughs> the, those kids that are that want to be into the new, whatever the new cool music is that makes them feel good about themselves, aren't going to be into Nickelback. It's not cool. And that's it. that's fine. No. I mean, we're not going to. That's okay. They can go like what they like, and the people that like us are going to like us, and that's all there is to it. Um, the, the the best comments I like reading on websites. Are like if you go to uh, a YouTube thing and you see um, uh, some of the comments below, it's like wasn't a fan till I got dragged to one of their concerts, and uh, now I won't miss them. You know, I'll never miss another Nickelback show yeah. that comes to town. Those are the you know, you know, it's like yeah. I think I think once so, they, once people see the show, if they do see the show, you want to be that band that you kind of have to go through that phase to think of, uh, you know, you're a new band, you're and then you're cool if you're a new band. But then you go to that phase where if you see some success, it's not cool like that band anymore. And also, they only ever have like one or two albums of success, and then we've moved on to the next one. You guys have been around for True. a long time. And, and also, I would say that you know Angus Young and Brian Johnson are two of the least cool people you could, <laughs> you could ever meet, and yet they're in the coolest rock and roll band ever. Yeah, but I, th I think that the, the detractors kind of have to, at some point, they'll hate on some bands, whatever it is, until they get a little older where they kind of go, you know, it, that's old to do that, and then they'll start to go... Yeah, it's not so bad because because it's really not that it's not that serious. We're just playing rock music. You don't have to get it, take it so serious. I, I mean, now it's like a, a lot of the a lot of the critics that were really like as soon as because they're like, oh, they're so commercial and they're just cashing in or whatever. It's like we like the kind of music we play. You're assuming that we're just four guys that know how to play some instruments, you know, that just want to make some money. If you want to make some money, 
rock and roll. As ACDC would say, odds. it's a long way to the top <laughs> if you want to rock and roll. You, it's the worst investment area to, to enter. Be a lawyer. Exactly. Yeah. Um, imagine that. We like the song. We like, I like listening to the radio. I like listening to DJs and, and listening to the music they play. I like mainstream music. I'm into that. I'm not the guy who's like, oh, have you heard this new band that no one else has ever heard of that I'm not going to like in 15 minutes because 20 <laughs> other people suddenly like them? I've never been like that, and I've always been the guy that's like, once it's a huge success worldwide, then I'm like, oh, I kind of like this new band. <laughs> what are they, you two? <laughs> They're pretty good. You know, I'm that guy. So. Listen, we got to go. It's always lovely to see you. And uh, see the you. UK tour is uh, just about to kick off. People can get their uh, details and tickets online, absoluteradio.co.uk. You're going to play live for us, so we're, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, live music from Nickelback. And where, where are we going tonight? Where are we going out tonight? Where do you want to go? Heaven and back, baby. Uh, <laughs> commercial, commercials oh. and then Nickelback play live next. It's Absolute Radio. <laughs>